Bobby, io mai che ho coordinato. Ok, a questa... Give me just one minute, ok? Okay, uh, a very good evening to all of you. So today we'll uh, discuss about uh, the theories of motivation, which is uh, uh, especially been inspired by social psychological theories. And uh, keeping in view the last classes, so we have already discussed about Herbert Simon and uh, Chris Igris and also of course um, uh, human relations theory uh, the viewpoint of elton mao then uh, subsequently the uh, theory is propounded by abraham maslow and uh, so today we'll uh, have a comprehensive discussion about uh, uh, the other motivation theories uh, uh, douglas mcgregor's viewpoint and also victor broom's viewpoint okay so uh, basically the concern which uh, been uh, investigated by all these scholars that uh, how to actually raise the productivity in the organization and uh, and they have uh, uh, of course in that uh, the logical connection between the productivity with uh, the employee's motivation uh, has led that how to actually uh, provide uh, new techniques and methods or new alternative ways uh, that how actually employees uh, feel uh, got motivated to work so in that regard all these motivation theories uh, Just one second.
the point is that while uh, when uh, you will read all these theories so you will be able to locate that how actually the concern for productivity and uh, its association with employees motivation has actually mot uh, inspired all these thinkers or uh, scholars to search for new theoretical directions that uh, how actually uh, a positive relationship between employees motivation and productivity could be ensured in the organization so so far as motivation uh, aspect is concerned of course it had begin with uh, um, taylor's uh, frederick taylor's ideas uh, who exclusively focused on the nature of pay are particularly the financial incentives which uh, he uh, was uh, thinking that it would be the best way uh, to make employee feel motivated but as uh, the um, human relations theory is concerned that it talks about that non monetary incentives social bonding the role of social bonding and social relationship uh, they do really matter in case of uh, bringing productivity uh, in the organization and <clears throat> taking into view uh, these uh, the two theories then subsequently the other theories have been expanded where actually the concern was that to analyze that the nature of human being itself like chris igris largely talked about in uh, so that how employee could perform how the employee would be able to enable to perform better so it's ultimately depend on the kind of organization he or she is located um, so in that context uh, that uh, if we take into account the need based theory so need based theories they are talking about that how certain meeting of certain needs are actually led towards uh, um fulfillment of the satisfaction um, of the concerned person and uh, motivated him to perform better uh, so in that regard the concept like job enrichment all these things have come up in order to explain the positive uh, with how actually employee get motivated and whether there is any kind of positive relationship between the productivity or uh, employees uh, uh, performance and uh, if uh, employee performance uh, needs to be uh, uh, encouraged then how it could be done so in that regard actually the viewpoint of um, um, uh, maclus uh, uh, mcgregor and uh, uh, victor boom is very relevant let me show you the slide mm. It is not coming. is it uh, why actually it is not coming hmm. just a second Is it visible now? So, so the question begins with that actually what and how employee would feel 
motivated to work okay so in that regard we have already explanations relating to need theory the hierarchy of needs so here actually the motivation one would feel motivated to work that uh, as per the need actually uh, uh, there uh, are two uh, broad understanding that how actually a, uh, an employee would feel motivated. So this understanding is based on the human nature that uh, one uh, understanding informs us that human beings, they are not actually ready to work okay they are not willingly ready to work they always want to get relaxation they always uh, need to escape from the work um, activities so so there is a necessity to control them and to make them work whereas the other understanding is about the self uh, motivation okay that being an individual that uh, we do have certain understanding that how actually we are going to lead our life in this earth so similarly uh, that kind of understanding also prevails in case of those persons who are working in the organization they those who are self-motivated they thought that it is their duty to work honestly uh, and uh, also to work hard so that uh, they will improve uh, their conditions, uh, social economic status would be improved further. So, so while taking into these broad directions uh, that here of course need matter. So need, uh, uh, so individual wants to work uh, um, because he had certain requirements, certain wants, and uh, most people uh, they do have different kinds of needs, and these needs can be grouped into two categories: primary and secondary needs. And of course, primary needs are those things that people require to sustain themselves, so like food, water, and shelter. So we have already discussed this, and the needs of these types are very much instinctive and physiologically in physiological in nature. Whereas secondary needs are requirements based more in psychology and are learned from the environment and culture in which the person lives. So performance in an organization generally begins with uh, the secondary needs. So examples include the need for achievement, autonomy, power, order, affiliation, and understanding. And secondary needs often arise in organizational setting. So it is especially important to consider them while examining motivated behavior. So um, uh, while we are uh, uh, claiming about efficiency in the organization, so a, uh, the, uh, the superior authority or you could say the manager like uh, in case of an industrial organization or private organization so he must need to know that actually that how far actually the employees who are working under that organization how far they are really motivated to the to do the work they are doing okay but in case of the government sector in, in, and exclusively in case of government uh, traditional government organizations such kind of uh, uh, things are uh, generally being forgotten to ask that uh, or to query that whether really the concerned government servant is really willing to work or, or motivated to work or it, or he is just there to just having um, in search of livelihood so that's why he is there so people, if people are to be satisfied with their uh, psychological contracts with their organization, the inducements offered by the organization must be consistent with their own unique needs. So need theories are generally the starting point for most contemporary thoughts on motivation that I just pointed to you just a little bit earlier, that how actually need theory motivated uh, uh, um, um, in formulating um, the contemporary thought on motivation. 
okay and uh, of course management uh, is very much interested in uh, doing uh, the act of motivation or learning that the how actually motivation of their employees needs to be enhanced because they really uh, seriously thought about the productivity finally needs to be achieved so in that regard let uh, the employees needs to be motivated to achieve the productivity so that's why the need theories which uh, uh, no doubt saves the contemporary thought on motivation um, um, irrespective of their critics so the basic premise of need theory is consistent with the motivation framework introduced earlier is that humans are motivated primarily by deficiencies in one or more important needs or need categories so of course that humans uh, uh, who, what actually uh, we need to search for so so in that circumstances that unless we feel that it is our need uh, we won't be ready to search for it to go for it so in that regard uh, it is somehow considered as a deficiency so such a def in order to address that deficiency that humans feel motivated to go for the uh, the the work and to explore that whether that how actually that things could be um, achieved so need theorists have attempted to identify and categorize the needs that are most important to people the best known need theories are the hierarchy of needs and um, the uh, erg theory and the, the that the relativity and growth theory and scholars also try to find out uh, the process involved in motivations and it led to the emergence of process of theories of motivation so these theories are more, uh, are uh, much more concerned with the cognitive uh, antecedents that go into motivation or effort and with the way they affect each other of course while we are talking about the motivation definitely it is the cognition part of the individual which actually needs to be unfolded uh, or uh, how actually the level of cognition has been uh, expanded that needs to be measured while we are talking about that uh, to uh, uh, how much a person concern is being motivated so in that regard <laughs> let's have uh, some look into let's have a look into the viewpoints of douglas mcgregor and uh, he was actually very much interested in uh, 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 learning about that how productivity um, needs to be enhanced of course uh, similar with uh, the inquiry of, of Frederick Taylor. And so he develops two managerial approaches called theory X and theory Y. Though, uh, uh, so these theories, uh, uh, you could take that, those two theories under that broad uh, uh, categorization that uh, individuals, they usually don't love to work or individual, they feel they are so much self-motivated, they uh, used to work. Okay, so uh, in such kind of uh, um, uh, trend also, such kind of uh, understanding also found to be prevailed in the theory X and theory Y. So the theories are published in his uh, human side of enterprise and he was greatly influenced by the work of abraham maslow and made him the starting point of his work okay so uh, maslow talks largely about the hierarchy of the needs okay so that's why so so here mcgregor uh, have uh, tried to uh, expand his theoretical base on x and y uh, as per the also the need theory so the main argument of mcgregor's work is that the theoretical assumptions which the management holds about controlling its human resources determine the whole character of enterprise 
okay so here that it is actually the management who need to who always uh, want to hold control over the uh, human resources the employees okay and um, so that um, so so uh, according to that as for that um, um, intention the entire management uh, uh, try to um, develop those controlling mechanisms so that human resource would be able to work and this also depicts the character of the enterprise like the enterprise like very strict discipline and uh, completely ordered uh, making its task fulfilling its task in time employees are been completely regulated in such a way that they are uh, um, reaching the office and disposing the desk work uh, as per the stipulated guidelines so all these things are actually uh, essentially needs to be uh, ensured uh, by the management who, uh, or what uh, um, mcgregor wanted to emphasize that such kind of practices in one way are uh, facilitated by the management so like other psychologist mcgregor studies the assumption about uh, human behavior which underline the managerial actions his theoretical construct characterizing theory x and theory y assumes a quest for high performance in the organization so if uh, when we are trying to learn that what makes somebody to perform well and what for, at the same time what makes uh, somebody to not to perform well so in that regard actually it uh, maclock's uh, douglas macgregor's theory have provided uh, the generalization that why some people they used to do better and why they are not so uh, in that regard uh, let me bring your attention towards uh, macgregor some major work like uh, the human side uh, enterprise and um, leadership uh, uh, and motivation uh, the professional manager so these are his uh, classic work uh, extensively analyzed how actually the concept of motivation uh, needs to be uh, um, followed or concept of motivation has been applied in the context of the organization or supposed to uh, uh work out in the organization so the management's action of motivating human beings in organization involves certain assumptions generalization and hypothesis relating to human behavior and human nature so uh, here that uh, in formulating assumption and also generalization and hypothesis it is the what mcgregor is pointing out it is the management who uh, plays uh, who uh, a greater role in comparison to the individual itself okay so in that regard the assumptions uh, uh, serve the purpose of predicting human behavior so here the job of the management is to learn about human behavior and also to predict it and accordingly that it has to make its strategy that how uh, it will go for uh, creating motivation among the employees so the basic assumptions about human behavior may differ considerably because of the complexity of factors influencing human beings so mcgregor presents this assumption on two opposite sides theory x and theory y so both of these theories they are in opposite to each other so let's have a look at the theory x and its assumptions so the assumptions underlying in theory x are the uh, the first is like what i told you the average person is lazy and uh, works uh, as little as possible then um, people lack ambition dislike responsibility and prefer to be uh, 
um, led, then uh, uh, um, people are inherently self-centered and indifferent to organizational needs. People are resistant to resistant to change, and most people are gullible and stupid. <laughs> so here, that uh, even if actually, uh, if you uh, while taking into all these kinds of uh, assumptions, if you also read uh, the other scholars who are not essentially management scholars, like you take into account uh, uh, the Herbert uh, Feiner. Herman Feiner. So Herman Feiner, as a scholar, he talked about actually that how ethics are controlled to be determined in the organization. So in public administration, ethics and control is considered to be as the one of the biggest issue uh, while running the organization. So in every uh, organization, um, the the or the function of that the concerned organization won't be possible without abundance to, to the existing conduct rules so herman feiner have also explained in the similar manner that uh, if we are talking about um, the ethics and control of the public servants then uh, um, uh, one school believes that that they needs to be regulated by uh, external um, agency or something which is not uh, in their hand okay somebody external needs to regulate them because human being always uh, needs to or human being always uh, uh, aspire to um, stay away from the responsibility okay so, um, so this responsible they don't use don't use to take responsibility. Mm. So in that regard, uh, while some uh, uh, while a public servant is working in the organization, so it is must be mandatory. The control must be external. So such kind of viewpoint also matching with the theory X that where the average persons they are lazy. Okay, mm. they don't. Uh, want to work they dislike responsibility and uh, they are only thinking about their own needs necessities and they are completely indifferent to the organizational needs um, so so while uh, uh, we are we used to uh, come across uh, about the efficiency of an organization so generally we uh, make the observation that how far actually the employees of the concerned organization is responsive towards their clients so if it is the case of the government organization automatically issues emerge that it is not responsive that the people are not coming in time to their workplace they are leaving early from their workplace so the file which is uh, um, been routed through their table so it got delayed because most of the time they don't feel like to uh, uh, dispose the that file in time so so all these kinds of complaints generally found to, in case of uh, the government organization of course uh, that uh, mcgregor uh, watch largely developed such kind of assumption in the context of private organization why i am referring to the government organization because once again we are thinking that those theories are found to be valid in case of explaining the efficiency of public sector organization then people are also resistant to change okay so this is a also very significant aspect which uh, describes the organizational reality like uh, um, you take any kind of reform when being introduced in the office management system maybe uh, relating to the by the application of biometric maybe relating to um, uh, the submission of uh, uh, performance appraisal in time maybe relating to the use of uh, uh, computers 
rather than the paper okay use of computers uh, to um, process the file so here people are generally resistant to change and i think that uh, you would be able to get uh, suitable examples of it when you could survey any kind of government offices so so like you take uh, the digital governance so india had experienced digital governance with uh, the new economic reform so uh, so initially that uh, there were many hiccups that how to actually uh, go for uh, digital uh, governance where people essentially thought about okay, okay uh, how could we will be upskilled in order to handle the computer so most of the um, people they were uh, thinking in the direction that uh, why actually we would we will learn it what is the necessity of learning it so after some days i may uh, um, go for retirement so in that circumstances what is the logic for uh, enhancing my skill and uh, showing it to the performance before the organization so in that circumstances people such kind of example could be taken as that how actually people are resistance to change and when they are becoming resistance to change of, of course the reform process itself um, got affected so so theory uh, as for the theory uh, uh, x that um, people are not essentially ready to accommodate any kind of new changes in the organization because they feel that that uh, it will uh, impact uh, their status quo <coughs> position in the society in the concerned organization and at the same time they are if we go by it that they like dislike responsibility then they really they are not really ready to go for new kind of responsibilities because any kind of reform have generally uh, uh, comes with the new responsibilities and uh, the th last one the most people are gullible and stupid <laughs> so here also that uh, the concern prevails that uh, many times people who are in the um, 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 dex job they don't usually think about uh, um, uh, or they don't uh, think about the work in a very serious manner and sometimes they thought that it will not be done um, actually so in that regard uh, such kind of observation or assumption has been made so theory x views that people are passive or resistance to organizational needs and needs to be persuaded rewarded punished uh, or control to um, achieve organizational needs okay so here that individual need and organizational need uh, needs to complement with each other okay so when there is a uh, incongruity or difference uh, between the individual need and uh, organizational need then automatically that will have an impact on the organizational performance so if we go by the theory x so uh, so so it essentially <coughs> talked about that people are not really been uh, uh, motivated they are generally passive and uh, uh, resistance to uh, change any kind of change they uh, they really do not appreciate so in that circumstances the responsibility of the uh, management or the organization is to actually identify that that uh, how actually human being needs to be motivated so in that process it is their responsibility to locate those needs where individual will feel motivated to get work in the concern organization so um, so th that can be uh, uh, pursued okay that can be like uh, 
pursued um, um, and uh, uh, reward technique could be used like somebody uh, have done better in comparison to others then in that circumstances in order to uh, have a positive impact on the organization as a whole and other employees that uh, reward to be given to the uh, concerned uh, person who played a crucial role towards the um, uh, organizational needs achievement then also the punishment so if somebody is not meeting the expected deadlines uh, given by the organization then in that case also uh, organization may initiate punishment or somebody who is not actually really showing the appropriate behavior uh, in the workplace and uh, not abiding the rules and regulations uh, of daily routine activities of the organization then in that circumstances punishment could be used as a strategy uh, to uh, make them um, understand and also that control techniques needs to be uh, given or managed properly so that um, there would be um, um, uh, the possibility of meeting the organizational needs. So theory X is based on the traditional conception of control and direction and uh, it uh, is traditionally known as the carrot and the stick theory and is based practically on mechanistic approach to human relations. Okay, so here that uh, control that uh, uh, it is essentially against the idea of or you could say it is essentially a, in opposite to the idea of uh, self-control that that whether human being really have uh, the capacity to control uh, himself or herself while um, um, thinking about um, the necessities of organization so in that regard x theory x was uh, or theory x is not essentially viewing a progressive um, move on the part of the individual rather individual that rather uh, management needs to do a lot in order to make uh, or fill uh, motivation uh, to the concerned individual so that he could work then managers subscribing to this new to these views uh, about human nature uh, attempt to structure control and closely supervise their employees okay so so here the most important thing is that management needs to learn all these things earlier so that it could have a uh, control over the employees of the concerned organization and it was by getting those kinds of insight the management would be in a condition to supervise them properly so they feel that the external control is most appropriate for dealing with irresponsible and immature employees okay so um, they essentially do not have any faith on the employees itself that uh, okay by his own uh, he would be able to do the work in time so that's why like you could say the presence of uh, the new reform which have come up like uh, the application of uh, uh, you, you take simple example nowadays in most of the organization we do have a biometric system so why do actually there is a biometric system hmm? somehow uh, there is a realization that uh, uh, people can't be trusted while uh, coming into the picture of the punctuality or to, to make their presence in a stipulated way or in a stipulated time so that's why there is a uh, biometric uh, um, uh, provision has been are largely applied in today's organization so this essentially shows that there is a kind of 
that's the theory why the uh, assumption or the uh, generalization made by theory why uh, is somehow actually been uh, reflected that people they usually lazy they don't they are always get late uh, they really don't want to work the time um, sorry that uh, don't really want to do the work in time so that's why that there is a necessity to push uh, them to be on time and in that regard management do have a major role okay so that's it's a kind of external control na, that uh, while somebody is not been able to come to the office during that stipulated period then there is also the penal provision <coughs> like uh, he may be uh, given uh, certain kinds of uh, um, uh, notice that for delaying or also there see in some organization there may be also the provision for cutting off payment so all these things actually uh, led towards uh, uh, the generalization the, in making the strength of the generalization that people are generally uh, avoid uh, responsibilities or to come in time they are not essentially really very serious about that uh, uh, present uh, to be there uh, in time okay so this is just a small example that what I have said. I don't know whether how far you have get it. <clears throat> okay. Now, McGregor also believes that these assumptions about human nature have not changed uh, drastically, though there is a considerable change in uh, behavioral patterns. Okay. Um, <clears throat> he argues that this change is not because of the changes in human nature, but because of changes in industrial organization, management philosophy, policy and practice. Of course, I do also agree with that, that uh, um, human nature, what we are observing that studying human nature itself been uh, um, a major uh, arena of research or you could say major arena of uh, uh, inquiry uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, um, um, the classical the philosophical inquiry itself so in that regard uh, we do have studied that how actually human nature uh, been shaped in the organization and uh, if we're thinking that individual is a very much rational being and uh, um, he or she has the capacity to determine what is rational. So in that regard, of course, such rationality must have a complementary relationship with the kind of work he or she is doing. And it must have a substantive impact on the concerned organization. But uh, the point is that uh, such, if we go by the theory X, that uh, here McGregor believes that the assumptions relating to human behavior have not changed radically, uh, but the behavioral pattern has changed. Uh, so, so such kind of behavioral pattern has been changed because uh, the changes in industrial organization, management philosophy, policy, and practice. Okay, so so here actually human being needs to show certain kinds of behavioral practices in order to make his position strong in the concerned organization or make his presence visible in the concerned organization. So essentially, it does not have any kind of relationship with the kind of the nature which he usually within himself. So here that uh, the people they want to come in time because some people they may th thought in the direction that okay it is not ethical the, the organization where we are working we need to be in time but for majority population that okay what is in it okay so so we are just uh, working because we need uh, some livelihood and uh, um, but why to work more and uh, 
uh, if there is such kind of uh, the mechanism where actually we need to ensure our presence by this time then we need to be there because the point is that it is good because the point is that uh, um, uh, it may lead towards unintended consequence for the concerned individual that it may lead for fine or it may lead for uh, notice so all this in so so all these things needs to be avoided so that's why behavior needs to be changed so such so the point here is that that something is good here um, being imposed by some external entity rather than by uh, followed by the individual itself okay so if we consider the hathran studies research findings by renas likert and other behavioral studies this do suggest that assumption of theory x uh, that cannot be meaningfully explained okay that how could actually we would be able to meaningfully explain the theory of x so it is they have they have predicted it actually that uh, uh, how we validate uh, the theory of x in the organization so far as organizational requirements are concerned that people individual they are exhibiting their behavior as per the requirement of the organization but why uh, such kind of uh, behavioral pattern has been shown so that the that explanation may vary okay but uh, <clears throat> like the that uh, the, the way i have discussed that uh, i am not there that it would be taken as a uh, thing that it it is a good thing so that way i realized and i am uh, i am there but um, i am i realized that no i need to be there because other the organization itself may question me okay so in that way uh, the validity of the theory x uh, needs to be uh, examined properly the assumptions about human motivation fail to motivate employees to work towards organizational goals and he says the carrot and stick theory of motivation which goes along with the theory x works reasonable well under certain circumstances so the universal applicability of it been debated among the behavioral theorist but this theory <coughs> does not work at all once uh, a man has reached an adequate subsistence level and is motivated primarily by higher needs so if a person has already achieved as per his expectation then in that circumstances that person may not stick to the requirements of organizational needs okay so so here it is pointing towards the limitation so so far as the like theory x is prescribing for external control so uh, no doubt who would be afraid of external control so so um, the person who uh, wanted uh, to retain his job uh, and uh, the person who uh, would uh, like to uh, would essentially not uh, uh uh interested to lose his perks or benefit or promotion so in that circumstances the that concerned person must be very careful about the external sanction so if the person is completely satisfied with his present position or the position what he has already achieved then in that circumstances how could somebody will uh, ensure that he will feel motivated to work like suppose there are different uh, level of promotions so so if the cadre of while working in that particular cadre the concerned person has already been gone to the highest level uh, in the concerned cadre and there is no more level are existing there so uh, in that circumstances after achieving that level automatically the concerned employee may not feel motivated to work so so th this also creates a concern that uh, once uh, a person has reached an adequate subsistence level so in that circumstances how actually he would be once again motivated by higher needs so magregor argues that theory x fails to 
describe or explain human nature and uh, of course theory x uh, presents a partial understanding of human nature or not just partial you could say that one sided understanding of human nature and um, uh, his generalization is that so long as the assumption of theory x continue to influence managerial strategy uh, will fail to discover later on utilize the potentialities of average human being so macgregor comes out with an alternative theory y with the underlying principle of integration which replaces traditional concepts of direction and control okay so these are the some assumptions of theory y that uh, and uh, it stands in uh, opposite to the theory x or the assumption which are, which have taken under the uh, theory x uh, the these things are there like people are not by nature resistant to organizational needs people have a latent capacity to develop and accept responsibility people can be motivated towards management tool and management must arrange matters so that people can achieve their goals through organizational objectives okay so you could say that this is completely in opposite uh, to the to those assumption which was uh, presented in case of theory x so theory x while presenting about uh, the pessimistic dimension of individual being theory y is very much optimistic about the human nature so here theory y is assuming that people are generally they are very much uh, associated with to the to the in, in the process of meeting the organizational needs they are really very much interested to um, see that how actually how fulfilling the organizational needs will finally lead towards fulfillment of their individual needs and uh, they have the capacity to develop of course i do also agree with this point that uh, um, such kind of development the way uh, generally the population used to see development so it also varies from the generation to generation so here that according to the expansion of industrial organization or the complexities associated with so people they uh, automatically been able to expand their capacity and also in that regard that they are also ready to accept the responsibility and people can be motivated towards the management goals okay so here we can just say that ki they are not essentially not really very much interested to meet the management goals and in that regard management must arrange matters so that people can achieve their goals through organizational objectives okay so here also management need to locate that how um, the, the locate the step that how uh, they need to uh, work for the uh, concerned organization so uh, in that regard um, it is also presenting a very no doubt it is presenting an optimistic viewpoint of human nature and uh, of course that uh, here once again management do have a uh, main role uh, in order to capitalize this optimistic nature of human being okay the assumption of theory why suggest a new approach in the management it emphasizes the cooperative endeavor of management and employees and um, the attempt is to get maximum output with minimum amount of control and direction so as uh, we have already discussed that how uh, the theory x is prescribing 
how control is essential okay a particularly external control is essential in order to make uh, human being motivated to work so such kind of you could say that such kind of motivation also uh, come out of the fear okay out of the fear uh, that if the concerned employee would not be able to do those work then he may uh, he might get any kind of punishment or he might not get any kind of progress so there is a kind of fear uh, which actually also led towards to motivate the employees to work but while we are looking towards the approach of theory why that here that motivation needs to go for achieving the aspirations achieving the ambitions and in that regard the attempt must be uh, for the management that to show uh, the cooperative behavior to the employees and also uh, encouraging them to perform better uh, so that they would be able to achieve their dream so in that regard the dark aspect of the control and direction needs to be minimized where that they need to collaborate with the employees and um, um, and trust them so that they would be able to do the work uh, as desired by the management so generally no conflict is visible between the organizational goals and individual goals so thus the attempt of employees that are in their best interest are also in the interest of the organization so theory why do believe that so organizational the relationship between organizational goals and individuals goals they are very much complementing with each other and uh, um, employees they need to be motivated to work in the best interest so that the interest of the organization could be fulfilled whereas in case of uh, theory x the uh, objective or the uh, uh, goals of individual or the goals of organization uh, essentially not complementary so that's why that uh, it prescribed that control needs to be exhibited in order to meet the uh, goals of organization then theory y postulates that people can be encouraged to perform better okay and thus recommends increased decentralization of power delegation of responsibility job enlargement employee participation consultative management and performance appraisal in which the employee actively participates okay so here that uh, the theory why it postulates that uh, um, that uh, it takes the strategy to increase the people okay so uh, to get to make perform through the encouragement okay and in that regard the strategies like decentralization delegation uh, job enlargement employee participation uh, so all these th strategies needs to be implemented so that the employee would feel that he is very much a, an essential part of the system. So his belongingness to the system uh, once again motivates him to work and such could be a possibility where he could be trusted in imparting some kinds of uh, big responsibility or uh, uh, in asking for any kind of feedback for the organization in asking uh, for their opinion with regard to the policy decision of the organization so here that all these strategies they do matter or they do open up the pathways towards the encouragement and for the uh, concerned employee to perform uh, effectively for the organization then theory why leads to a preoccupation with the nature of relationship um, with creating an environment which encourages commitment to organizational objectives and which provides opportunities for the maximum exercise of initiative ingenuity and self-direction in achieving them okay so so here that how actually 
relationship is being built uh, between the commitment of an individual and the organizational objective that needs to be thought out so there so here the concern for the theory why is to locate uh, the uh, the possibility of uh, complementarities between the commitment uh, uh, of the individual towards organizational objectives and also that here that uh, opportunities must be given uh, to the concerned human resources so that uh, they must uh, initiate their action uh, in a uh, um, more autonomous or self-directed manner rather than getting only the direction from the above so that they would be able to feel themselves participative and also you could say that they would be able to consider themselves as a stakeholder in the process of the organization or organizational activities so this theory recognizes interdependence of human organization and participative management so just now i talked about the idea of participation and while we are taking the strategies like decentralization delegation so automatically it is opened up the opportunities for participation so an employee who is not essentially the part of the management if management is asking for his opinion with regard to the policy decision then definitely he will feel elated that uh, uh, or a kind of satisfaction um come uh, within uh, him that okay that i am somebody so i also been asked about the policy decision in the organization so this theory recognizes interdependence of human organization and participative management the central principle of <coughs> theory why is that integration of a behavior is the key progress in the management okay so it believes in integration formula of all kinds of behavior so that uh, progress could be possible or progress could be achievable uh, in the management and uh, the concept of integration reflects a recognition of the needs of the individual and those of the organization so once again it is uh, attracting um, the need of the employees where uh, the concerned organization needs to think about how those needs to be satisfied though not uh, in a very uh, explicit manner but in a in an implicit manner Sorry. so mcgregor calls this his theory why an open invitation to innovation okay so definitely theory why which is presenting a very optimistic view about human being so automatically here human resources could uh, get the opportunity to show their best within them of course that it uh, may varies from person to person or individual to individual but in that case that at least those who are doing well or those who have the intention to do well automatically that uh, they would somehow acted as a complementary agent to the organizational objectives so in that regard that uh, the justification is that, that it is an open invitation to innovation of course that if the strategies like decentralization delegation and participation uh, would be incorporated in the uh, decision making process and also in uh, delivering the organizational uh, objectives at the uh, field level then automatically that uh, the scope for innovation will uh, also um, open up so theory why is today a household expression in management circles and administration today is tending towards theory why and the future will see more and more democratic administration so will you agree with this really 
that uh, no doubt every organization they are nowadays are talking about that they are now becoming more democratized they are now adopting the participative management techniques they are now giving their employees more scope to open up to express their opinion to uh, contribute um, effectively uh, towards meeting the organizational objectives the um, and they are having somehow more democratic administration like you take any kind of private sector organization also so we do also have a grievance redressal committee so it the presence of grievance redressal committee or the presence of um, uh, um, uh, that uh, equity cell that where the issues relating to prevention of sexual harassment in workplace needs to be done with. So here, uh, um, all these presence of mechanisms, uh, do you really think that uh, the administration or the management has becoming more democratic? Of course, it may uh, shows the trend that, okay, we have now institutionalized all these informal uh, aspects in the formal organization. But uh, still, don't you think that um, the case of the mechanized way of control has also been enhanced? So both the theories, if we compare both the theories X and Y, they have certain assumptions about the human nature. And these assumptions seem to be mutually exclusive. The difference between the two sets of assumptions can be visualized as follows. Three, uh, um, the X uh, uh, theory assumes human beings to be uh, inherently um, dis, uh, uh, tasteful towards work. And theory Y assumes that for human beings, work is as natural as play. Okay, so any kind of human being, he can't uh, distance himself from the work. So um, while we are going by to the classical uh, uh, Indian management thinking that, okay, that uh, uh, every individual needs to do his karma. So you can't uh, detach a, an individual from uh, his karma. So in that regard, theory why also resembling that aspect that human beings, they essentially they do work. It is very natural uh, to them as uh, the play. So uh, while coming to the another comparison theory, X emphasizes that people do not have ambitions and try to avoid responsibilities in jobs. The assumptions under the theory Y are just reverse. So ambitions, particularly in modern society, are taken as quite natural. That while we are thinking individual needs to go for progress. So how this progress could be uh, possible without an ambition? So it is actually the ambition which pushes us for the progress towards that uh, uh, position of material and non-material things. So in that regard, uh, um, it would be um, quite unrealistic to say that uh, theory X uh, is uh, the what theory X is talking about uh, the human nature that they are not ambitious. It's re hardly reflect the social uh, reality. Um, um, and so far as uh, theory Y is concerned, that it is reversed, that uh, human beings are likely to have more ambitions. And of course, they do need to take responsibilities, particularly in uh, uh, the organizational setting. So everybody, he wants to particularly if we say that uh, the younger generation who are entering into the organization they definitely want more work so that they would be able to um, show their best before the organization and if they could be a, a very um, critical agent with regard to meeting the objectives of organization so automatically it will may enhance their position in the concerned organization so in that regard this is the way 
and then according to theory x most people have little capacity for creativity while according to theory y the capacity for creativity is widely distributed in population so theory y essentially not viewing that uh, uh, that human being uh, really does not want to take responsibility or a human being does not uh, have the capacity or the capacity is been specific to certain individual not to the larger population so theory y is rejecting all those propositions and in theory x motivating factors are the lower needs okay so uh, what you will feel Uh, motivated to go for it so that is actually about the lower needs why does theory why higher order needs are more important for motivation okay so so um, so a higher order needs means particularly it is talking about the psychological and social needs that we are that to being a human we generally uh, um um think that somebody needs to recognize us somebody needs to um, um uh, give uh, um positive uh, feedback uh, to our work uh, somebody needs to appreciate our work so so we all also need to have a better life and good status the powerful status in the society so in that circumstances that it is the higher need actually which makes us uh, you could say ambitious or also that um, motivated to work so uh, for as uh, theory x is talking about that it is the lower needs that is uh, the uh, primary needs uh, which consisted of uh, your uh, physiological needs okay It's of course true that you don't feel uh, uh, self motivation aspect because theory X is completely talking about that human being don't have any ambitions. So of course, if somebody does not have any ambition, then how could the, the self motivation aspect will come up from there? Okay. Whereas in theory, people are self directed and creative and prefer self control. then uh, theory x emphasizes scalar chain system and centralization of authority in the organization while theory y emphasizes decentralization and greater participation in the decision making so in that regard actually theory y is more democratic okay in comparison to the theory x okay so uh, and accordingly the kind of leadership uh, they are advocating like theory x emphasizing on autocratic leadership and theory y emphasizes on democratic and supportive leadership style okay so these are about the theoretical prescription and the major implications of theories x and y may be seen in the management uh, process so uh, like uh, setting objectives and developing plans to achieve them implementing the plans through leadership then controlling and appraising performance against previously set standards so these key managerial activities are selected to illustrate the possible effects of theory x and theory y on managerial actions 
like uh, you could classify them under the heading of um, planning then secondly leadership then thirdly about the control affairs so you would be able to get the detail on this okay <clears throat> so McGregor's rejection of traditional conception of administration has been questioned okay traditional concepts such as control and direction which he has rejected are still of great value for understanding human motivation okay no doubt while coming to the um, who as we have made a comparative analysis between the theory x and theory y mcgregor has ha, had not essentially uh, um, uh, suggested that okay that which finally would be the best one of course the theory y sounds to be the best one best alternative to theory x but uh, the social reality is somehow is not representing this bin binary dimension of theory x and theory y so in that context like theory x talked about the presence of control and direction whereas theory y um, believes in rejection of or uh, or about uh, limiting the role of control and rejection so here question arises that if um the value of control and direction is not be there then how could still um, 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 the presence of control and direction is still persisting and uh, still how actually human being uh, feel responded while meeting the command of the control and the direction so theory x that mcgregor does not favor as it leads to an emphasis on tactics of control but it has some value despite all the researches and theories of motivation that have come to the fore in recent years it should not be forgotten that the carrot and stick theory uh, which essentially use rewards or punishment is still strong and hence could motivate people in spite of the tremendous amount of research generated by mcgregor's theory it has never been tested adequately okay so here you could say that um, uh, being a student of public administration at the master's level you could go on for making a dissertation the applicability or the presence of theory x and y in the concerned organization that how why actually somebody is coming to the office in time like you could say that is it really here uh, uh, it is by default his nature to be punctual or it is something that uh, he may if he will not be in time then he may not he may get notice from the office so that actually motivates him to come in time okay so being the master students uh, so you could have uh, uh, gone for such kind of surveys that you hear where you could be able to validate um, or examine the validity of uh, theory x and y okay so he makes uh, very much con no doubt constructive contribution to the human motivation theory he rejects the underlying assumption about human behavior on which formal organization is built and propounds theory y based on a more adequate understanding of human motivation so his theory has had a tremendous impact on managerial thinking in modern organization and theory y explores the myth of economic man and traditional concepts of direction and control <clears throat> so besides mcgregor's theory on x and y we do also have another theory 
propounded by Victor Broom that who talked about um, or who developed uh, the expectancy theory and this expectancy theory have come up uh, against um, as an, or, or you could say that as an alternative to the content theories where actually uh, it is assumed that all employees are alike so there is no difference among them and all situations are alike and there is only one best method to motivate employees that is satisfying needs so contrary to the assumption of content theory a number of other theories have been developed after extensive such studies based on empirical evidence so in that regard uh, victor broom's uh, expectancy theory is a leading one okay so victor broom actually he made a very substantive contribution to the management thinking that uh, where um, uh, which deals with the concern that why actually um, one need to motivate okay no doubt from the side of the management uh, there is every rationality or logic is already prevailed that uh, how the um, why actually employee needs to be get motivated of course it do have a major impact uh, on the productivity of the organization but simultaneously that uh, how actually such kind of motivation could be a possibility so in order to know that um, that how actually human being needs to be motivated so there is a necessity to learn about that the level of expectation uh, of, of the individual from the organization so here actually we believe that behavior results from the conscious choices among alternatives whose purpose is to maximize pleasure okay but uh, and um, so here automatically the expectation is that increasing the quantity of effort will improve performance okay and it is affected by having the proper resources available uh, and having appropriate skills to try the work and having the necessary support to urge the work done okay so here that uh, he while making his significant contribution to the uh, motivation theory through his expectancy uh, theory so the basis basic expectancy theory model emerged from the work of edward tolman and kurt levin and uh, but uh, his name is being generally credited with uh, first applying the theory of motivation in the workplace and uh, this theory attempts to determine how individuals choose among alternative behaviors and the basic premise of expectancy theory is that motivation depends on how much we want something and how likely we think we are to get it okay so here the that if we want to assess the performance of the concerned individual so we need to have a measurement about the kind of expectation from the concerned employees towards the organization and that uh, expectation uh, expressly visible in the form of what exactly he want and how much want okay what he want and how much he want the quantity okay the quantity dimension that uh, how much uh, it uh, how much he required okay and how likely he is thinking that he would be able to get it okay like that somebody who is aspiring for the post of board of directors in a company but this this might be an expectation 
but the point is that um, being a person being starting uh, while working in a in the concerned organization so why actually he would be asked for the concerned post mm. and uh, uh, how much actually he would be able to get it uh, and how far actually he would be able to pursue it and make himself uh, available in that aspired post so that measurement needs to be done uh, or to be assessed while we are thinking about the motivation of the concerned employee <laughs> so victi uh, so here Brown's expectancy theory can be classified as process theory in contrast to the content theory. So content theory primarily believing in that finally that as for the situation or there is essentially the motivation essentially does not um, need to be pacified but whereas expectancy theory or the role of the uh, uh, or the conceptualization of expectancy theory has been moving on a way that here we need to understand that how actually um, the individual behavior has been affected by certain kinds of behavior in the organization which makes him to get motivated for the work so this system orientation is in direct contrast to the content theories which have attempted largely to specify uh, correlates of motivated behavior so it is the relationship among the inputs that is basic focal point rather than the inputs themselves so broom develop uh, his motivation model around the concept of value expectancy and force okay so um, he hypothesizes that uh, the behavior uh, outcomes from conscience intention among uh, alternatives whose objective is to maximize pleasure and minimize pain so once again he is also deriving his philosophical insights from the utilitarian theory that where uh, individual is being characterized as the being who always loves to pursue pleasure and to avoid pain. So expectancy theory also hypothesizing the condition or the behavioral condition of a human being in such a way where the outcome for the conscious intention among alternatives uh need to be determined through that how much pleasure it is going to give and how it will minimize the pain and he realized that an employee's performance okay an employee's performance depends on personality skills knowledge uh, experience uh, and the skills okay so he claimed that effort achievement and causes are correlated to motivation so motivation here is essentially not being driven by single variable there are multiple variables which actually uh, um, encourage employee to perform and uh, of course employees performance depends on multiple barriers like the kind of personality the person has the kind of skill the level of skill he has and of course the knowledge and also experience so all these things matter uh, while assessing an individual's or employee's performance so in that regard how those variables they need to correlate with each other so that actually determine the motivation so he claimed that <clears throat> effort achievement and courage are correlated to motivation so he uses the term expectancy instrumentality and violence to account all these things all these variables that how uh, it could be 
determine or how it could be related to each other and here particularly if we stick to the expectation the expectation is that increasing the quantity of effort will improve performance okay so here the quantity of effort or you could say the amount of effort needs to be taken by uh, the concerned employee in order to achieve the uh, objective of the organization so in that regard like concern the like uh, if i work harder i will perform better so here victor brown essentially not talked about that uh, individual or the employee somehow is very genius one or having the talent uh, already there uh, but he was very particular about that uh, the concern of hard work so somebody who is the doing hard work definitely uh, it will make an impact on his performance so so why somebody will actually do hard work okay tell me so here actually the uh, expectation is persisting that uh, that uh, i need to perform well okay so if i need to perform well so i need to do hard work and uh, uh, so for that actually i need to increase the volume of my work increase the quantity of effort okay i need to uh, put uh, massive amount of quantity towards the effort my effort so that it could be able to improve my performance and here such quantity of effort is affected by having the proper resources available like you take the example of raw materials time okay so if i want to do better suppose if you take the example like i want to make a good presentation which is likely to be presented before all the board of directors or before the um, um, senior members of the organization then in that regard being an employee so i need to uh, prepare the presentation in a more effective way so that everybody uh, would be able to understand uh, the situation and at the same time they would appreciate my performance so in that regard uh, the management do have also expectation from the concerned employee okay this employee would do well okay and in maintaining that relationship with management the concerned employee also needs to uh, prioritize or to go for an effort that how could his skill would be uh, properly be presented before the management so in that regard uh, generally uh, uh, certain resources required like the level of information uh, 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 Um, available uh, available in case of that employee and also the kind of skill of presentation and also the time how much time he has invested in pre preparing the that uh, presentation and the uh, application of so 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 all these things matter uh, where the quantity of effort is affected by the proper resources then having the appropriate skills to try to the work so uh, having the necessary support to urge the work uh, done so in that context like supervisor su support or correct information on the job so all these things they require uh, with regard to the performance uh, on the part of the employee so here he also talked about the instrumentality okay that uh, where instrumentality that instrumentality is the concept that if you perform better the result will be achieved okay and uh, here the point is that um that how actually individual or employee how he is perceiving 
his performance before the organization. So if, like take the situation, if I perform well, I will complete the specified effect. And it is often affected by a clear understanding of the connection between performance and outcome. So here, employee needs to generate the understanding or the perception that that how his performance actually really contributing towards the outcome of the concerned organization. And in that process, he has to build the trust within the people uh, who actually need to take into account uh, have a positive faith on him that uh, this person is really good one whom we could be trusted because he is having the potentiality in achieving the outcome of the um, organization and transparency of the method that decides who gets what outcome. So in that regard, that instrumentality is also a necessary uh, um, um, component in the expectancy uh, theory. And uh, of course, the other one is the uh, valence. Valence is perceived, uh, is the perceived value the worker puts on the result. For the valence to be optimistic, the person must prefer fulfilling the merchandise to not gaining it. So if an individual exists primarily compelled by money, they could not value offers of overtime off. So in that regard, that here, while taking into account the effort, okay, effort will bring performance better, okay, and uh, performance will bring uh, the outcome expectancy, you could say, that uh, effort performance longing and performance outcome expectancy. And here, there is a relationship between um, E, effort, and P, performance, performance uh, expectancy. And here, that the probability lies that how actually efforts we cause the specified accomplishment in the organization. Okay. So, Broome's expectancy theory works on perceptions. Okay. So, although a, it is a motivation tactic uh, which applied uh, um, in uh, organizational uh, sphere to work uh, uh, with the most people within the organization, it doesn't suggest that it will work for uh, everyone. So, Broome's theory can equally pertain to any circumstances or any circumstance where someone does something because they want a specific outcome, okay? So here, the role of the employee itself is becoming uh, very much, uh, um, you could say that he could be an independent uh, um, variable in uh, towards bringing the specific outcome of the organization. But how actually his behavior finally responding towards uh, the um, in uh, uh, actualizing in the effort, the quantity of effort required for the work and also the resource mobilization and finally uh, meeting with the specific uh, outcome uh, surrounding all these things that the expectancy uh, theory evolves. So proper recycle, uh, so uh, here, uh, the point is that people, they generally um, thought about, they believe that it is uh, very much like you take into account the resources part, okay? And uh, also um, that people generally thought about that the, how much resources they are available with. If they wanted to put a uh, huge quantity of efforts in order to achieve the uh, specific objective of the concern organization, then they are uh, need to make an equivalence um, with the kind of effort with the kind of resources they are having with. And then only they would be able to go for the specific outcome of the 
organization and uh, here that um, it is essentially not about uh, self interest in rewards but about uh, the associations of the people make towards uh, expected outcomes and therefore the contribution they feel they will make towards those outcomes so no doubt here broom's expectancy theory essentially is not talking about that individual they feel get motivated to work for the money okay they feel get motivated to work for the association or the kind of people they wanted to be associated with and also they believe in making contribution so that is so that's why broom's uh, expectancy theory is also been leaders uh, referred in the leadership theory as well because here that how the individual would be able to contribute towards the organization and to the society as a large been taken as the prime motivator uh, uh, to work okay of course no doubt how much time uh, uh, in terms of putting efforts uh that person is giving and also how much resources uh, he is been available with that so that finally uh, how far actually he would be able to meet the expected outcome so all these things they are not uh, uh, the concerned employee is not doing uh, due to that he's exclusive uh, he is exclusively interested in rewards rather he is doing it that uh, towards the association of the people so in that regard the expectancy theory states that an employee's motivation is an outcome of what person or proportion a private wants a gift the assessment of the likelihood that the trouble will cause expected performance and therefore the belief that the commission will be rewarding thus the expectancy theory uh, concentrates on uh, um, that um, uh, the in establishing the three relates uh, relationship like the relationship effort performance relationship where that uh, what is the likelihood that the individual's effort is recognized in uh, his achievement uh, assessment then assessment reward relationship then the rewards and individual goals okay so these are three relationship through which uh, the expectancy theory could be discussed that one is about uh, effort performance relationship where uh, that uh, the individuals effort needs to be recognized uh, in his achievement assessment so like you could say that he got this because the kind of effort he had put uh, like you could say that okay he had uh, become um, a successful entrepreneur a successful business person a successful uh, civil servant so there is a necessity to examine that how much effort actually he had uh, put in achieving the kind of achievement he's been highlighted for uh, for so is it about the quantity of time he had given to so that's why he's been recognized for that and such effort for the like uh, you might have come across with such kind of examples like he's a very sincere person he's a very hard working person so the kind of organization now um, um, uh, built up so it is due to his effort so here actually automatically uh, the effort of the concerned individual is been highlighted then assessment reward relationship so it talks about the extent to which the workers believes that getting a direct performance appraisal result in organizational rewards okay so here that the organizational rewards how it could be determined so so organizational rewards here essentially needs to be determined on the basis of that the uh, performance appraisal of the concerned employee 
so so organizational in organizational reward that uh, that there must be an assessment about the performance appraisal and the third one is rewards individual goals relationship so it's all about the attractiveness or appeal of the potential reward to the individual so how much an individual is really motivated to get the reward like so many prizes i have got so so i need to achieve this uh, prize this that uh, position so here i am looking forward reward in terms of acquiring position in the industry so in that regard it has become an individual goal so here also the expectation to get reward motivated the concern individual uh, to perform and uh, that uh, this goal uh, finally led towards um, or motivate the employee or the individual to go for it okay so broom believed that employees consciously decide whether to perform or not at work so once again here he is making the point clear that uh, uh, it is employees decision that how much work he is going to do and um, uh, to what extent he will be able to perform so all these things will be uh, finally decided by the employees so this decision solely trusted the employees motivation label which depends on expectancy validity and instrumentality okay so when employee has been convinced himself that okay i need to do this work anyhow i need to i will not do this work anyhow so in that regard automatically the level of motivation will come up that to inspire the concerned individual whether to go for the work or not to go for the work so so here that uh, so his decision automatically depends on that uh, the expectancy validity and the instrumentality so according to broom behavior results from a conscious choice okay from alternatives and employees prefer getting the possible joy from their work with little effort once again um that um, macgregor's uh, the theory x is somehow found to be visible over here that uh, how much little effort to be put uh, in exchange of getting maximum output so individual factors play a significant role within the goals that need to be achieved and therefore the behavior of employees and as an example consider an employee's Uh, personality knowledge and skills and expectation of his abilities so together these for this form an exciting force that creates the worker to act in a certain way so individual effort interpretation and motivation they are consistently connected and uh, um, in order to motivate employees properly he argues that it is essential that there is a direct correlation between the effort and the performance okay so he uh, had given the first uh, relationship as the primary one in uh, making employees get motivated for the work okay so with this i am ending so if uh, there would be any um um questions so you can share um, and in tomorrow's class uh, we'll uh, go for um, we'll go for uh, new public administration and of course uh, the system system theory the open and closed system cooperative system and uh, Uh, if you do have any specific query you can ask me by the way how many students are actually attending this uh, course do you have any idea how no many how many students have enrolled for it 
No, ma'am, we don't have any idea. Okay, then if you don't have any queries, then I would like to um, sort it down. Okay. I think uh, I'll, uh, we need to wind up, okay? Raja Kishore, you want to say something? You always <laughs> raise your hand, uh, but you are not saying anything. You are muted. Mute hai jai Ah, uh, I'm not able to hear anything. You are muted. Okay. Mute hai hai ji. Speaker ta ku on karo. Okay then, uh, we'll, meet, uh, we'll uh, meet in the next class, okay? So, okay, bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. You are always raising your hands, but so they are not asking.
ਜਾਂਦਾ ਰਹੀ ਉਹ ਤੋਂ ਜੀ ਜੀ 
उसके बाद ये सारी जमीनें हैं ना तुम्हारे नाम कर दूंगा मैं फिर तुमको जो फैक्ट्री लगाने का है जो करने का है उसके ऊपर अपने इच्छा के हिसाब से कर लेकिन पापा उसके लिए तो फिर मैं उन फैक्ट्री से निकलने वाला कचरा जहरीली बॉक्सिंग उसके बारे में सोचना पड़ेगा सही बात है लेकिन उनको क्या लगता है भाव साहब ने उसके बारे में सोचा नहीं अभी तक नहीं बाबा आपने अफकोर्स सोचा होगा परमिशंस रेगुलेशंस क्या मेरे को वो स्टेप बाय स्टेप सोचने की आदत हुई और वैसे भी अब तो ये सारे काम सीएम कस्तूरी सत्यराज वडकर करने वाले हैं सर आप बोलो वो जो पेमेंट बोली थी आपने करने को वो हो नहीं पाई 